In this video, we will cover the assembly of a SCARA version 3 by 3D Potter. Once you have unpacked your machine, we can start assembling it right away. The first step is to take the belt and feed it down through the rail. We can then start sliding up the proxy arm up the main rail. It is very important that the bushings on the cars do not pop out of place. You should look down the inside of the rail and give it a visual inspection to make sure that the belt has not been twisted around inside of it. Continue to feed the proxy arm up the rail until there is enough belt to put into the belt retainer. We're going to remove the belt retaining screw on the bottom part of the plate and very gently pry it up with a screwdriver, just enough to sneak the belt in. Make sure that all of the teeth of the belt retainer match up with the belt so it is fully seated all the way in. There is a hole in the belt that will also line up with the hole in the belt retention plate. Make sure these line up as well. We are then going to put the screw back in place going through the belt plate and the belt. It should be relatively tight. While we are using some power tools to assist with the assembly of the machine in this video, that is not required. You can use the included Allen key set. If you are going to use power tools to assist you in the assembly, make sure not to over tighten screws too much. Continue sliding the proxy arm up the rail while ensuring that none of the rail bushings are out of place. Next, we are going to insert the pulley at the top of the rail. The set screw that is being tightened here should not be over tightened. It is possible to strip the threads out if you tighten it too hard. For the next step, we are going to insert the Z-Rail into the main base. It is secured by a rail nut which will slide up the Z-Rail, and we need to ensure that all of the screws are very loose on this piece. Right now, the proxy arm can move freely up and down the Z-Rail. When you lift the Z-Rail up, make sure you support the proxy arm so it does not slam down the rail. It is important to ensure that the rail does not slide down too far into the base. Make sure it does not slide down any farther than this or we won't be able to insert the motor and gearbox. Inside the base, the belt should currently be limp underneath the rail, allowing you to insert the motor and pulley system. We are then going to tighten the main Z-Rail belt of the machine. We are first going to tighten it by hand by pulling up on the Z-Rail while supporting the proxy arm and then tightening the screws on the back. Now that the main Z-Rail belt has been tightened just a small amount, we need to prepare to fully tighten it. We are going to attach this belt tightening tool to two nuts on the back of the Z-Rail. To not scratch the paint of the machine, we're going to add a couple blocks of wood to the top of the base and pry it against the wood with the belt tightening tool to lift the main Z-Rail upwards. We are then going to pry the main Z-Rail upwards. 
Loosening the screw on the base will allow it to flow up and down freely, and you can pry it up with a screwdriver. With a screwdriver of this size, you can pretty much apply the maximum force you can. You should then check the belt tension to make sure that it is springy and will bounce back easily. If the belt tension is good, make sure you tighten all of the screws that are on the rail nut of the main Z rail. They should be tightened by hand to a pretty high degree. The belt tightening tool is now no longer needed but the two nuts that secured it will be used to secure the wire harness of the machine. There should be markings on the rail that are made with a marker to show the placement of the wire harness securing brackets. This bracket that is holding the wire harness is made of plastic and the screw securing it should not be over tightened to not make the plastic crack. Again, try and line up the securing brackets with the markings on the rail. Next, we are going to attach the main connectors. There's a pin on top of the connector that slides into the top of the other one. Make sure that these are lined up and is not rotated in a different orientation. Don't pull the wire connector out of the base of the machine. Bring the wire harness to the main connector. Next we can plug in the motor connectors. There are small screws on the power connector for the motor that you can screw in to make it have a more secure connection. The maximum travel distance of our machines when we send them out is 400 millimeters or 40 centimeters. When the machine homes, it will hit this Z probe switch and then when prints start, it will travel down 40 centimeters and start the print. Placing this Z probe switch at a lower height on the rail will cause the Z car to crash into the base of the machine when prints start. It is very important when installing this Z-probe switch that it is above the line marked on the Z-rail. The screws here can just be snug. They do not have to be tight, allowing you to move the Z-probe up and down as needed. If you wish to change the maximum Z-rail travel distance of the Z-car, please see our other videos on how to do this. Changing this setting may require you to move this Z-probe into a different location. Next we are going to attach the proxy arm. Feed the extruder wire through the arm and then attach it from underneath. We are going to use 16 screws to secure it. It does not matter which orientation the arm is, as when the machine homes it will be set in a new position. Here we are going to be using zip ties to secure the extruder wire and ensure that it is not hanging low. Here we are using a small pair of wire snips to grip the end of the zip tie and put it through its other end. We also need to make sure that the extruder wire will not be hitting the screws on the harmonic drive. 
Using zip ties, we can orient it to make sure it is relatively vertical. As shown here, you can see that the wire has plenty of room and is not touching the top of the harmonic drive. Next, we are going to power on the machine and connect to it and try homing all of the axes. With the home all command started, the Z will home first, and then the bass, and then the distal arm. Once they've all three have been homed, the distal arm will move out a bit. With the machine homed, you can then control movement of the machine manually through the web interface. Here we are moving the Z arm down all the way to its maximum limit. Since we place the Z probe switch correctly, it will not crash into the base. When a print starts, this is how low the machine will go. This will allow you to see how close the nozzle of the extruder is to the surface you are printing on. The motor of the extruder must be positioned away from the distal arm of the machine. When the machine homes, if the motor is in the wrong orientation, it can crash into the distal arm. Here you can see that the nozzle is not directly touching the table, but rather just above it allowing clay to flow out and make contact with the surface. You can now attach the extruder motor wires and start your first test print.